as to be your president. She is the most experienced candidate ever. First female president of America. Thank you, Hillary. First takeover day one. A woman with a global profile. Hillary Clinton has been the most famous woman in the world for a long time now. And with the chance of making American history. People are ready to see a woman lead the nation. The presidency should be Hillary Clinton's destiny. But instead of a coronation, it's become a slog. With familiar scandal, and new controversies. She is somebody who doesn't think the rules apply to her and has consistently felt she doesn't need to shoot straight with the American people. Once American royalty, now one of the most polarizing candidates in history. She's quite unpopular. People don't like her. So what is the problem with Hillary Clinton? Hillary Clinton's journey towards the presidency has had more twists and turns than most. I followed this American icon along that route to find out who she really is and whether she can secure the most powerful job in the world. She was first lady to one of America's most charismatic and perhaps flawed presidents, a husband who turned their marriage into a soap opera for the world. Those White House years, though, became the foundation for what came next in her own political career. In 2016, the candidate who so many Americans just don't like. think of Hillary Clinton? Oh my. <laughs> uh, I'll just say I'm not voting for her. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything in particular that you don't like about her? Uh, pretty much everything. What do you think of Hillary Clinton? I think she's terrible. I think she should be in prison. Not a fan then? Not a fan. If you had to think of one word that sums, sums her up in your mind, what, what would it be? Um, Let's see, I would probably say she is a typical politician. By default, I like her. Um, she's not my perfect candidate, but I would vote for her over Trump. I don't like her, uh, I'm upset about her, but I'm unfortunately gonna have to vote for her. I'm not a fan, not a fan at all. I think she's distrustful, deceitful. She would make a horrible president. Well, I may not be the youngest candidate in this race, but I will be the youngest woman president in the history of the United States. And one additional advantage, you won't see my hair turn white in the White House. I've been coloring it for years. The striking thing to me about covering Hillary Clinton has always been that there are so many people who go to see her and aren't enthusiastic about her. You have a crowd of thousands of people who've come out to cheer Hillary Clinton on the day she announces her candidacy, and you wade into the crowd, and half of them turn out to be sort of, well, I'm a Democrat, She's okay, I guess. Or, 
I have serious issues with her, but she's famous, so I came out to see her. There just there are people who are enthusiastic about Hillary Clinton, but there are also a lot of people who are voting for her out of a sense of duty or sort of partisan obligation. For all those doubts, 15 million Americans did vote for Hillary Clinton in the primaries, millions more than for any other candidate. She does have a large, dedicated, and vocal following. They were queuing outside West Los Angeles College before 8 o'clock in the morning. This is what American politics looks like today. Passion and engagement, more like what you'd see at a sports event. The result matters. In the queue, three generations of the Hooten family. If all goes well, I will have the great honor to be the Democratic nominee for president. Thank you all so much. God bless you. What did it feel like to be there well, and to see you? stood for maybe a straight four or five hours. So. <laughs> we didn't know if we would be even close enough to see her or if we yeah. would be able to get inside. We just thought, well, wait. Well, we might be way in the back, who knows? And then we came in, we were right in the front. I was gonna try to get a picture and then Josie was like, give me the camera. Mm -hmm. That was crazy, huh? Yeah, and then when we were taking the selfie with Hillary Clinton and then uh, also we got to shake her hand, that, it just felt like a dream. It didn't feel like it actually was happening. And she looked so you right in the eyes and she yeah. said, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> The issues that are most important to me are the ones that are inclusive of the most people. And that's what we teach our kids at home, and that's what I like to hear from her, is what she's going to do to represent a lot of different groups, especially marginalized groups, that deserve a voice. And ideally, that's what a president should do. She's so ready for it, but it's, and it's also, it's not just about uh, us he, here in the U.S. or here in California. I think that, and she demonstrated this as Secretary of State, like she's got a vision for the whole world. It's been a long struggle for her, and she's had to climb uphill against a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, prejudice about women. Um, that's not why Hillary Clinton should be president. Hillary Clinton should, should be president because she's the smartest person running, and she was the smartest person running when there were 20 candidates, and she's the most capable and most experienced person running. Uh, but I do think uh, milestones like that make a difference. She's not judged as a conventional politician. There have been, for many years, conversations at dinner tables all over the world every night by the hundreds of thousands about who is this person and analyzing her character and looking at her in, in simplistic terms uh, that you ordinarily apply to movie stars' lives. Yet all those years playing the political game, it seems guarantee nothing as we race towards that ultimate popularity contest. At Real Clear Politics, we track all the major polls and we compute a lot of averages to try to get a sense of where the public is in general. what's happened from last summer through to now. Before she was officially running for president, oftentimes her favorable, unfavorable uh, rating was uh, about plus eight. So it'd be something like 52% of the country views her favorably, 44% unfavorably, something along those lines, something pretty good for a political figure. Uh, and then once the primary started heating up, people started thinking of her politically again, uh, it was a pretty drastic drop in favorability and pretty drastic increase in unfavorability. She's not particularly popular as uh, normal presidential nominees go. Uh, in fact, I think she's the second most unpopular uh, presidential nominee in, I want to say, the history of polling. But 
the most unpopular is Donald Trump. So she still has a definite advantage there. Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States, Mr. Donald J. Trump. 2016 has become about who Americans dislike least. She's a world-class liar. Just look at her pathetic email server statements. She believes she's entitled to the office. Her campaign slogan is, I'm with her. You know what my response is to that? I'm with you, the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false, and I need to go back to work for the American people. Thank you. Yes, I was Bill Clinton's lover for 12 years. And for the past two years, I have lied to the press about our relationship to protect him. The truth is, I loved him. I never ask anybody to do anything but tell the truth. Bill and I have been accused of everything, including murder. ABC News reported someone else at the White House may have caught President Clinton and Lewinsky in an intimate moment. I owe it to the American people to put it in a little box and keep working for them. Day after day, I've seen his determination, his unrelenting determination. The allegations are false. Be patient, take a deep breath, and the truth will come out. I'm not sitting here as some little woman standing by my man like Tammy Wynette. I love him, and I respect him. It's almost impossible to prove your innocence. And he would try to pay me a great deal of attention with her there. Everybody says to me, how can you be so calm, or how can you just you know, look like you're not upset. And I guess I've just been through it so many times. Instead of speaking out, she stood smiling at her husband's side. From my perspective, this is part of the continuing political campaign against my husband. There's gonna be a war. A war between whom? Between the friends of the president and the independent council. That's exactly who it's between. And between these scuzzy, slimy tactics of, 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 of wiring people up. Some folks are gonna have a lot to answer for. You know, it made a lot of people mad when I got elected president. The president's conduct was deplorable. B and he hereby is acquitted of the charge. Congress is going to impeach the president. The uh, presumption of innocence belongs to the president. I want to say again to the American people, indeed, I did have a relationship with Ms. Lewinsky that was not appropriate. In fact, it was wrong. It constituted a critical lapse in judgment and a personal failure on my part for which I am solely and completely responsible. I misled people, even my wife. In this issue, uh, her che his cheating heart, uh, we found, uh, we unveiled uh, Paula Corbin Jones. Paula Corbin Jones uh, w uh, instituted a sex, sexual ab abuse case against Bill Clinton. He lied about that bill in that case and he got himself impeached. It wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been in the American Spectator. We tripped across the most interesting story of the 1990s, uh, Bill Clinton's uh, con ongoing excess and Hillary's ongoing enabling of Bill's excessive behavior with women. And of course, this was a more penetrating piece than anything Woodward and Bernstein did. Um, I mean, this really caught him in a seducing woman after woman after woman out in parking lots <laughs> in the the governor's mansion and places like that. Because the Clintons have been really in the crosshairs of the cultural wars of this country for so long, uh, the quote, vast right-wing conspiracy, end quote, it's kind of real. We actually published a story in the American Spectator, I think it was 96, about how Bill cheated at his golf game. He was caught cheating at, at golf by one of our reporters. I mean, it was a funny story, but it was, it was a part of this great pageant of lies 
that they've been putting together since uh, 1992. She, as you know, has described all of all of what you write, all of what a lot of people write, as this this conspiracy against her, this vast right wing conspiracy. What do you say to people who, who say that in her defence? Well, I'd say, how would we we manage to provide material, new material, year after year after year, if she weren't crooked? I mean, this when she was made Secretary of State, she was in a perfect position to commit no more blunders, no more scandals. Uh, and what did she do? She committed blunder after blunder, scandal after scandal. Those four years as America's top diplomat gave her enemies plenty of ammunition. Accused of failing the Americans who died in Benghazi, but cleared of blame. Wow. Huh. Unconfirmed reports about Gaddafi being captured. My husband is not the Secretary of State, I am. <laughs> so you ask my opinion, I will tell you my opinion. I'm not going to be channeling my husband. It is another State Department scandal that haunts her. When Hillary Clinton became Secretary of State, rather than use the government-provided State Department email system, she used her own email, and she stored those emails on a private server in her home that she had set up for that purpose. On that private system, she also distributed or received a lot of information that was technically classified and should not have been exposed to the public internet. One hundred and ten emails in fifty-two email chains contain classified information. I did not email any um, classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. Eight of those chains contained information that was top secret. I opted for convenience to use my personal email account, which was allowed by the State Department. The security culture of the State Department was generally lacking. I thought it would be easier to carry just one device for my work and for my personal emails instead of two. None of these emails should have been on any kind of unclassified system. Looking back, uh, it would have been probably uh, you know, smarter to have used uh, two devices. It is possible that hostile actors gained access to Secretary Clinton's personal email account. In retrospect, this didn't turn out to be convenient at all. We cannot find a case that would support bringing criminal charges on these facts. Well, I'm sorry, you're the Secretary of State, and under law, your official communications are the property of the American people, not your own personal preserve. Her campaign is a very difficult time dealing with it. I mean, when they ask to explain it, they basically say uh, she's been under the gun uh, for so long, under attack from Republicans for so long, that she's sort of developed a paranoia and maybe she goes overboard with it sometimes, but she has a justified reason to be nervous, right? To be afraid. Playing about two. Is that somebody throwing something at me? Is that part of Cirque du Soleil? Ironically, for somebody who has a, you know, a trust problem, she's actually, I think, the most trustworthy person we've seen in a very long time running for president. I think part of her problem is she knows that, that some of the things without nuance aren't entirely true. And that's a problem for her because she has a very high standard of truth. You know, it's easy to tear down. It's hard to build up. It's easy to insult. It's easy to criticize. Why on earth make that decision when she must have known the risks that, that came along with that? It's clearly uh, something that was done to evade the requirements of the Freedom of Information Act. Who uses the Freedom of Information Act? Well, yes, political enemies do, but also the press. It's a basic tool of, of, of the press. Hillary hates the press. That doesn't mean that you can set up your own server in your basement and say, well, I'm not subject to the subpoenas of my enemies. Lots of time. Hi. Great. Well, lots of time to talk later. Thank you all. How was the what did you say? 
it's especially problematic for her because it's fresh. A lot of the baggage of Hillary Clinton's political life comes from her husband's administration and his ancient history to a lot of voters. Older voters feel like they've heard it before. Younger voters feel like it was something they learned in history class. Uh, so to have this scandal that is fresh and that is complicated, so without knowing the details, a lot of people can just look at it and, and see it as a dark cloud hanging over her campaign. You know, you gotta make split decisions. That's what leadership is all about. This kind of secrecy uh, is a Clinton hallmark. It's a Clinton sort of political hallmark and it makes people very, very nervous. Secrecy issue is a problem. The trustworthy issue is a problem. What? The email is a problem. I think there's a perception that wherever the Clintons go, there's a mess. It's kind of astonishing. And it can come back and bite you in the ass. The excitement, the enthusiasm, the sense of political momentum, all for a Democrat who wasn't Hillary Clinton. When you stand in the crowd at a Bernie Sanders rally, you feel what he's tapped into, the discontent with politicians, the sense that a lot of people are being left behind. Like Donald Trump, Bernie got that, Hillary Clinton didn't. If you want a candidate who's gonna help create a government which works for all of us and not just the one percent. We need your help. I have been on the road with Bernie supporters and Hillary supporters. And a lot of Bernie supporters are still not ready to embrace Hillary Clinton as Democratic nominee. A lot of people I talked to were talking about voting for a third party candidate or not voting at all. So I think that there's a lot of Democrats who still have a lot of problems with her. I think she means well, but I honestly think that money has talked to her more. I think that there are big corporations that are guiding her a lot, and I, I don't think I can trust her. What do you think about Hillary Clinton? Next question. <laughs> Ultimately, when push comes to shove, I may vote Hillary just because I do not want Donald Trump in office. Trump is un-American to me. He should be deported. Between Clinton and him, I think it's quite a fine line. And I just see it as, hey, if it's gonna go to let's just go there. Let's do it fast, quick, and something will rise out of the ashes. So the revolution would come with Donald Trump? Yes, it would. I mean, it's either it's slow death or quick death between the two. As a Clinton, she's always been able to count on the African-American vote. Even that, this time, has been weakened by the doubts about her. The message is never Hillary. No one who's Bernie or Bust will ever vote for Hillary Clinton, and that definitely includes me. People feel that they're going to have to hold their nose while they cast their vote. I think that's a ridiculous idea. What Hillary is doing right now for black people is... is She's making more money and making ways for you for college and funds. And you believe like that? that? I believe that. There is a part of me in my conscience that would never allow me to vote for her. Hillary knows more about foreign policy. OK. All right? OK, so let's go you back I mean, to now, now, when it comes to, like, America, he does well. I mean, uh, free health care, college tuition, all that kind of stuff is great. But I got to think about the bigger picture. Yeah. How is she the yeah. best candidate for the world? She's the best. I mean, it's, right now, she is. I would no, never vote for Hillary Clinton. Well, I have to. Look, and I know tens because, of because thousands. If he doesn't no. get in, if he doesn't get in the general no. election, but listen, and then, you're you know missing what, I mean? what I'm telling you. you know I, mean? we'll I know what thousands what and what thousands the across right the country Tuesday that tomorrow. will not vote for her. <laughs> if Adolf Hitler ran as a Democrat, are you going to vote for him because he's a Democrat? That's why we don't do that. 
You are one young black man in America who needs to make the best decision based on the best person available. <laughs> great, great, great. Thank you. Now Thank you gotta you. take a One more convert, baby. <laughs> Love you, Mr. Sanders. God bless you. <laughs> See you. Bye. 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 Here's what's going to happen with Bernie's voters. There's going to be about 20% that vote for Trump. The young people are going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Young people are not uh, sort of the cranky, I hate everybody type of people. They're, this, this new generation is in general extremely pragmatic, much more so than we are. They have our same ideals as those of us, the baby boomers. These are our children. What they call America's Rust Belt, places like rural Kentucky, have also traditionally been Democrat territory. This time, bypassed by the economic recovery, some are looking elsewhere for their savior. The political landscape of America has shifted and a candidate who's been a fixture of American life for so long is finding a country that's changing. Well, that's the America I want to build for the 21st century. Will you help? Yeah. Will you help for 70 more days? Yeah. Will you help for four more years? There were just thousands of people. It was a sweltering day. I mean, it was hot. We haven't had too many presidents that, that have come to, to Ashland. You know, Bill Clinton was, was very popular at that time. The economy was, was so much better. Thank you, and God bless you. Hang in there. Let's go. was a coal miner and we spent many, you know a lot of time just really struggling because he would get laid off or they would go on strike to fight the the contract to try to get their benefits so the fact is coal mining has never been an easy or dependable living really it's just you know when things are good things are good and then they're quite <laughs> quite the opposite you know extreme when they're bad the coal industry has, has kind of been on a decline, and uh, you know, in particular during uh, the Obama administration, coal's been on a serious decline. So we are the trickle-down part of, of what's happened with coal. So kids coming out of high school, you know, and going to college, you know, so many of them don't come back, and and that's kind of sad. We're going to put a lot of coal miners and coal companies out of business. I just want to know how you can say. You're going to put a lot of coal miners out of out of jobs, and then come in here and tell us how you're going to be our friend, because those people out there don't see you as a friend. Her stance on coal has is pretty much out there, and and I'm not sure people around here appreciate that too much. So, not as popular as as, uh, as President Clinton was for sure. For all the scandal from his presidency, Bill Clinton is hugely popular. He's also a high-profile reminder of what his wife is not. I do not believe in my lifetime anybody has run for this job at a moment of great importance who was better qualified by knowledge, experience, and temperament to do what needs to be done now to restore prosperity, to deal with these human issues to make us as safe as possible. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Hillary Clinton has the tremendous misfortune to be intimately connected to two of the most charismatic American politicians of the previous century. Bill Clinton is sort of a freak of nature in his ability to connect with people. He has this uncanny ability to make friends in whatever room he goes into and make people feel that they are personally connected to him when, as soon as he opens his mouth. That's a very rare trait, and it's certainly not one that Hillary Clinton shares. I have run my last campaign, and I couldn't be prouder of the things we've done together, but I'm ready to pass the baton. 
And I know that Hillary Clinton is going to take it. And I know she can run that race, the race to create good jobs and better schools and safer streets and a safer world. And that's why I'm fired up. And that's why I'm ready to go. And that's why I'm with her. And that's why I need you to work just as hard to make sure that Hillary Rodham Clinton is the next president of the United States of America. God bless you, North Carolina. In a world in which we sort of do the do the the metric against Obama, uh, an orator so amazing that he was you know won the Nobel Peace Prize just for being elected president, right? She's not at that level. She's not going to come in and wow a room. She doesn't have the gift of woo. She's not going to woo everyone towards her. She's not Bill Clinton. Is she not personable? She says things that come across as tone deaf. This is her life story. In terms of likability, it was said about George W. Bush that he was the president that you'd want to have a beer with. He also made a lot of political decisions that hurt a lot of people in a lot of places. Even though she can't sort of stand there on stage and give uh, a Bill Clinton style stem winder, she has not been able to sort of pull that off yet. Uh, she has enough political skill that she can really chop somebody up on the debate stage. You'd better be prepared with all the facts when you make your case to Hillary Clinton uh, or you're going to be sent packing quickly. She's not going to change. Everyone knows what to expect. She's been really clear about how she wants to do things and um, what she's done and I take comfort in that and I think she'll do it well. corrupt person ever to seek the presidency of the United States. Donald Trump's ideas aren't just different, they are dangerously incoherent. She's a world-class liar. Just look at her pathetic email server statement. I believe the person the Republicans have nominated for president cannot do the job. Hillary Clinton's message is old and tired. He is temperamentally unfit. She's virtually done nothing right. She's virtually done nothing good. Somebody got under his very thin skin. She just talks about Trump. She does a speech about what, how unprepared Trump is, what kind of, how kind of a clown he is, how ridiculous he is. And that has become the driving fuel of her campaign. She does not have the judgment. This is not someone who should ever have the nuclear codes. The mindset in each campaign is going to be to go make the other person glow in the dark more. They're going to try and irradiate each other. I know these problems can all be fixed, but not by Hillary Clinton, only by me. That is the choice Americans face. It is a long way back to Arkansas in the 70s, where Hillary Clinton began to build her political persona. In defeat and victory, through the governor's mansion, friends here say the cold and aloof candidate America sees is not the real Hillary. I was anxious to meet her. I mean, I, I thought this is gonna be someone really special. And the first minute I saw her, she smiled, I smiled, she came into the little headquarters. She said, you're Patty. And I said, yes, you're Hillary. We hugged and we've been hugging for the last 48 or nine years. We just liked each other. Um, I thought she was so authentic. And I thought, um, I didn't expect this raucous laugh. This, she's, it's, I mean, when she laughs, it's a laugh. I can't relate to the comments that some people make about her character. I'm kind of old, and life is kind of short, and I've had your circle become smaller of friends and family as you get older. I'm not going to maintain a friendship for my whole life 
with someone who would have character issues or who, or who would ever be questioned about her trustworthiness and her honesty. From the small town south came the rise to life as one of America's elite, out of reach, maybe out of touch for most Americans. Do you think that is something that she hasn't managed to do, to get that, those personal qualities across? It's an interesting question, and I think Hillary's just beginning to really share some of the personal side of her life. She's a very public person with a, a real desire for privacy. I've known Hillary for decades, and I know her very well, and I know her experience very well. There's a real gallery there of uh, Al Pacino. Yes. Al Pacino, Al Pacino to, who's uh, a really Netflix. good friend, yes. And, and Henry Kissinger helped a lot with the project I worked on called the Four Freedoms Park. I had the privilege of finding the Clintons two homes, two houses. I was their real estate broker. and. The one question in Hillary's mind always was, is there an appropriate room for my mother? Sometimes we visited houses three times, and at the end of it, if Hillary didn't find the room for her mother to be good enough, the house had to be ruled out. She is a person of family, as I, I've never experienced in all of my professional or personal life. my mother could be here tonight. I wish she could see what a wonderful mother Chelsea has become and could meet our beautiful granddaughter, Charlotte. And of course, I wish she could see her daughter become the Democratic Party's nominee. She was very close to her mother, and her mother and I were very close to each other. It's, a, it's sad to me that she's not here to watch Hillary be the first woman nominated by her party. It's also a little bittersweet. I'm sort of glad she doesn't have to see some of the brutal things and some of the fabricated things that are said about her daughter. Laws and regulations. The death of an American ambassador. Three members of a U.S. security team on the ground in Bengal. Her life story is now fodder for a multi-million dollar industry in attack ads. It seems the more she shows, the more is thrown back at her. It causes great consternation when she, when she proclaims, I will be the first grandmother in the Oval Office. I'll be the first woman president. I will be breaking glass ceilings. We've been doing focus groups with, with women who are either weekly for her, undecided, or weekly against her, but not hard partisans. And you show them footage of her saying things like that, and they start arguing against her. We don't want to be judged on our gender. We want to be judged on our, the value of our ideas and our achievements. Donald Trump likes to say, I'm playing the woman card. And I like to say, if fighting for equal pay, Planned Parenthood, and the ability to make our own health decisions is playing the woman card, then deal me in. <laughs> We're the most complex society in the world. We could have a, a million people studying us the way turtles are studied in Galapagos, and, uh, and I don't think you'd come up with, with too clear an answer. I mean, we are an infinitely complex culture. By some measures, it's the most liberal generation in American history. It's also the most diverse generation in American history. Young people believe that they are race blind and color blind and gender blind, but that may only be because they have yet to wake up to some of the uh, ways the system works. There's no way of knowing what it is that, that, quote, Americans expect. One of the things, and this election is to a large extent as much about the American people as it is about these candidates. My sense is by the time we get to October, 
the candidate who is able to find some significant part of their message mix that's devoted to laying out a positive and optimistic vision for the future of the country is a candidate who's probably going to have a good shot at winning. Travel the country and you hear a lot about an America divided, and it is no more evident than on who should be their 45th president. No candidate in history has been so well known to the American people. It rests with them whether to end her political career or hand her the greatest prize of all. She becomes president, I will think I died and went to heaven. She's the best qualified candidate in probably 50 years. Maybe more. I think she's the best person for the job. Absolutely. I'm hoping I get her autograph today. <laughs> American voters have good instincts. And what people really want to know is, can you relate to people like them? Can they imagine you in the Oval Office? Really, there's only one issue, and that is Donald Trump is unfit to be the President of the United States. The ball is kind of rolling down the hill towards a Hillary Clinton election. She is a tough competitor. She's surrounded by a machine. Uh, she'll be superbly financed, magnificently staffed. She's personally a dreadful candidate, but she'll make up for some of that by the skill and the the, the nastiness of the people that surround her. It's absolutely a historical milestone. I mean, here we've been for more than 200 years and all of our presidents have been male, so she would be the first. Whether it's a reason to vote for her, I think that's what we have yet to see in the general election. It will still be difficult to get there, but I think you'll find in the end that the women of America will be there for Hillary. will rise together because we are stronger together. Let's go out and make that case to America. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. American woman.